Reaper fans, here I am. It's your Anne. I hope we have people. I don't see anybody in chat yet. Oh wait, I have to adjust my chat because I can't see you very well. There we go. Yay! Yeah, sorry guys. I um yesterday was the move-in day. Like my movers uh pretty much let me go like let me know the night before last that they were arriving at 8 a.m. yesterday. So uh so I had to kind of hustle. <laughs> And it, otherwise, we would have given you guys a lot more notice, right? Because I had hoped that they would tell me they were arriving, like, Wednesday or Thursday. So I could be like, okay, guys, we're good until then. But no, it's like, tomorrow morning. I'm like, crap. <laughs> and it was, like, 8 a.m. And the moving took to, like, 11.30. It took a while. Because they had to reassemble all my stuff, like my desk and my table and all that stuff. Uh, morning, morning, Kaz. Morning, Chewy. Morning, morning, Cornico. Morning, Sharky. And Miss Dimp and Andre Cat and Margaret. Hello. So yeah. So, but huh? What was that? Justin? I was gonna, I was gonna say good good morning to you, uh, cool cats and kittens. Oh man. Okay. What is that from? Because that was much. Uh, there was much ado on Overwatch about that too. Like, um, you have to get on. Uh, that that's your homework for tonight. You have to get on Netflix and mm -hmm. watch uh, Tiger King. Oh no, no. I refuse. I'm sorry. If it that's is, what it's it from, I'll just like. I'm just yeah. No, thank it's you. It's a slow motion train wreck, though. Yeah. I hate train wrecks. I'm so I I like I all the drama that I have like in my current life is enough. <laughs> I don't need to actually watch it on television. Um, yeah, they're all so crazy, right? And I'll be upset because it involves animals, right? And I do not want to even go there. Like so, no. I, I mean, will, I will say, thankfully, and I and ironically, the focus on the show is uh -huh. is basically just the people, right? And really, frankly, they don't go at all in depth about the tigers whatsoever, other than everywhere they are, they seem to be seem to be treated semi well, with the exception of a few moments. But for the most part, they don't even focus on the tigers at all. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a reason he's in jail, so it's kind of probably good they don't focus on the tigers. Um, so yeah, yeah, nah. Mm. I mean, that was pretty close to home because, I mean, he was in Oklahoma, so he wasn't far from us in, uh, Texas when we were both in Texas. I, or in fact, I remember, I could have sworn, like, how long ago did he get put in jail? Because I could have sworn I remember driving past signage. Less than, like, four months ago or something like that. Oh, wow. The end of 2019. Okay. But I think the whole point Warning of the show German. is to show that everyone on that show, everyone needs yeah. to be in jail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're all, They're all crazy and insane. And I just, even just seeing the trailers, I was just like, I'm done. I'm done. No, thank you. So, so yeah, exactly. So, hey, Nomad Zeke. Hi, everybody. Yes, I'm here. And guess what? This is my actual desk. Like, this is the actual workspace that you will see me in from now on. Uh, David was so happy to get his desk back. So, yeah, so now there's a different red and black painting on the wall behind me. And um, we're going to work on getting some of my, like, maybe one of my Elmore prints uh, framed. Because um, I have signed uh, limited ones from Larry. Uh, to put behind me so that would that it'll be more of an Anne space less of a david uh david space um but yeah i have uh yeah shiny black leather yes yes um we were talking about tiger king numbat because they just uh justin opened with the cats and kittens uh crazy cats and kittens and i was like where is it from because i don't watch the show so now i know now i'll just resume avoiding the show <laughs> So yes, yes. So it's time to start getting our paint. I should have been getting my paint on the palette while I was talking to all of you about all that stuff. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do some shiny black leather today. Um, Tara the Silent has uh, boots that are very good for that. Uh, Werner's boots in general are well sculpted, so I find them easy to do nice highlights on. Um, we're gonna use. I'm gonna show you a couple different colors that you can use. Actually, I'm gonna get these in front of my camera. Hopefully everything is working. We're going to switch over to do, 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 that. Oh, and I needed to, oh, uh, okay. Well, I won't be able to go back to face cam because I forgot to deactivate my intro. I'm like, I'm, I'm coming. I'm still getting back in the swing of things, right? Yeah, mover came yesterday, numbat. That's everything is still in disarray. We were a little late this morning just because I have to search for things and I have to dodge around things. And yes, and David and I will get into these uh, conversations about, oh, we need to move this. Oh, where does it go? And I'm like, ah, I have to get online. <laughs> So yeah, so essentially, uh, the nice thing is that now I'm in my actual workspace. This will be my office. Um, so hopefully everybody will be happy, including me. Yay. I think I'll be happy. We'll move down the palette, get it in frame just a little, although it's, uh, 
don't want it too much in frame. So today's colors, things that you are working with for shiny black leather is you, uh, you always will use pure black for this one. Almost always like technically you could, Hey Jedi Jared, um, technically you could use blue liner. And I was actually searching for my blue liner because I often do use blue liner for this, um, because it is a blue black. So just adding white to it. I mean, you guys saw it on the dragons, the dance of Dra dance of death where I could, you know, just take blue liner and, and add white and it turns into, you know, a great blue gray highlight. But I don't know where it is because I'm still unpacking. So, um, so you can use any blue mixed into your black to really get an effect. And these are just some of the colors that I might use if I couldn't find my blue liner. Um, and let's talk a little bit about why we want blue when we're going to do shiny black leather. So essentially what you're doing is you're implying sky reflection. Um, so you will always use, if you want a shiny black leather patent leather effect, you will always use a bluish color to highlight your black. Um, and what that does is it essentially just suggests that it is strongly reflective, that it is picking up the sky color. If you have shiny black leather outside on a blue sky day, you are going to see, um, some blue tones to it for sure. So especially in the shadows, that's, that's the weird thing about, uh, about all of this is that, uh, you know, under sunshine, yeah, you get golden shadows, but then you get a lot of blue also. So it's, it's like, we have to simplify things a little bit cause we're working on a tiny little figure. So we're not working on like a full size person. Um, so we have to just kind of get the blue in there somehow to kind of satisfy our eyes requirement for that. Uh, and if you use golden highlights at all, they should be mixed into your pure white as your final highlight. Um, and everything else should be a bluish color. So let me see here. Yes. Yes. Sometimes one of the same, exactly, Nomad Zeke, right? Oh, now you've given me an idea for my next D&D game that there's going to be, there's going to have to be the Thieves Guild is also the fetish club. Maybe I need to make like medieval goth clubs, like, except goths actually existed in, you know, medieval times. So it wasn't quite so weird, but it would be weird to make a magical goth club in a fantasy world. If anybody has done that, then you have to tell me. Uh, hey, Paul Jones Life, how are you doing? And yay. All right. So that said, um, I've got some black indigo here. And, and if you do not have your blue liner, black indigo is also a good color for this. It is a little purpley, so it's not quite as realistic, I think, but it can still serve. Um, otherwise, what I would do is, is use like four drops of pure black and then one drop of any of these blues um, and kind of tune it. Uh, void blue uh, is pretty much just a, a dark blue anyway, so it'll it'll give you a little less intense of a blue shift. Clear blue obviously is going to give you a pretty intense blue shift because it's very strong and has a lot of pigment in it. So if you want a very very bluish highlight, then you could go here. Um, Ashen blue is uh, is a good one. I use it for um, Sky Earth NMM, so I, I do find that it it does look like sky reflection, but it isn't very strong on the blue, so it isn't going to give you as much of a blue shift. And you may like that. So it all depends on the model that you're working on, right? If you're trying to go more realistic, maybe you go with more ashen blue. And if you maybe want to pop it and go a little more cartoony or anime uh, or sci-fi, you might want to go more with a strong blue. I think I'm going to go with void blue today just for fun. <laughs> Yay for giving it an idea. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, I'm unlikely to be running a game anytime soon thanks to social distancing, but you never know. At some point, it would be nice to get a game night going here, even if only uh, I'm going to add one little tiny drop of white, then I'm going to add my blue. I'm going to show you guys kind of the difference between the blue, the black indigo and the pure black with the drop of white blue added. I'm just going to add one drop of white to start with and see what color that makes. And it's perfectly okay to just tune this. Uh... If I want to start, yes, yes, uh, lock, lock twain. Yes. Uh, yeah, we do. Um, learn a paint kit. Uh, you want the first one and not the layer up one. Layer up is more advanced, uh, but the first one and the second one build on each other to teach you techniques. And they also give you a very nice selection of starting paint. Uh, so you get a nice range between the two kits. Uh, and of course you also get brushes, you get minis to practice on. So that's, it's pretty much a no brainer. And we put, and we discount it a lot too. Um, Reaper does. I can still say we because I still work for Reaper. Yay. Uh, um, D. Clearman, uh, black indigo has a lot more blue in it than shadow violet. Shadow violet has only magenta, I believe. All right. And if it does have blue, it has a tiny bit. Um, 
not very much, but I think it's, I may have added a tiny bit of blue to it, but we'll see. I'm going to mix in the white here and show you guys what these colors are. So the one on the left is um, black indigo, and you're probably going to see it. As I add the white, it'll become more evident that it has a lot of purple in it. So that makes a very pretty purpley color, which you could use, but I, I find that it may be a little bit too purple. But you could use it. Hey, Trouble, how's it going? Um, oh, the miniature survival kit. Yeah, are we still doing those, Margaret? Like, I would imagine that we still are. Um, yeah, there's virtual tabletop, but I miss the... It's, it's specifically... Like, if I wanted to just get on a computer and play Numbat, I would just play WoW. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the social game night aspect that I miss more than the actual gaming itself. All right, so our, our pure black is extremely strong, so essentially... I'm going to have to add another piece of, another bit of white to see. Sometimes if you have a very dark color and you want to know what pigments are in it, add a bit of white until you get it to shift to gray. Then you'll be able to see like how, how blue or how green or how whatever color it is. Okay. So now I've got very dark gray. I can only barely see the blue. So I probably need another drop of void blue, but I should probably base coat these boots first and get the midi in focus. Yay, so let's get the mini in focus. I'm going to actually temporarily move this out of frame because it just helps if I just have the model pretty much sitting here. Let me get my stack of stuff to rest her on. There we go. All right, there we go. Mostly taking up the camera. Auto focus. There, we should be good. There we are. And I could get a little, I guess I could get a little closer. Sorry guys, we set up I set up everything yesterday. I didn't get time to do a test so much. So all right, is she in focus? Tell me. It's good to me. Alright, good. Um Dragon Black's fine, Miss Doom. I mean, Dragon Black has uh the um also already has a little bit of blue violet in it. Not a lot, but yeah, if you add white to that, Dragon Black would be perfect. If you want a little more blue, you could use more void or more, you know, stuff uh more more whatever blue you're using to tune it more blue. So let's get this, let's get this going. Let's paint our boots. So I actually started with a dark gray. So I'll do that. I can always shade it with black. You can start with either. Um, sometimes it's nice to start with a dark gray instead of a black, and then you can actually add the shadows in pure black. And it also depends on if anything else on the model is going to be pure black. Like if anything else on the model at all is actual pure black, then you do not want to start with a dark gray. You want to start with black. Whatever the darkest color is, is going to read as black. So if I don't do any other black areas on her that aren't painted this way, then uh, I'm safe. But the minute I decide to make like her vest black, then these are going to look dark gray. So it, it's all relative. Everything is relative. But yeah, if you want to paint black and you want to actually add shading to it like you would with a regular color, just start with dark gray. Oh, I have a big mold line there. Bad me. You can tell that I've been so busy. So busy. You know what? I might want to... Hmm, where did I put my knife? There it is. Let's take it off. Uh, yeah, Hager, it is a matter of preference and also I believe it's a matter of style. Um, it depends on how thin or how thick you want your paint. Um, I use a lot of very thin paint. And so for me, it's more important to dial in my paint consistency. And then I'm just going to slice this mold line off. Um, and once I have my paint consistency, uh, dialed in, then it'll stay in my palette. Um, it'll stay at that consistency for longer. Whereas people who use thicker paint, they don't have to worry so much about that. They want to be able to spot blend. So they'll use a wet palette for that. Um, the, uh, I, I find that people who use bigger brushes and thicker paint love wet palettes and people who use thinner brushes and thinner paint love well palettes. Um, it very much will give you different, uh, results depending on your, uh, your style and the thickness of your paint and, and what kind of brush you prefer. And I've worked both ways and I just prefer thinner paint for finer effects. So because I like really subtle uh, glazing and blending and all that. Actually, I could show you guys a model that I'm working on if you want. I'll have to cover up parts of her because her lower part is naked, but she has some really fine layering. Um, and for skin tones, especially on large models, if I want it really smooth, I really need to use... Uh... Yeah, thanks, Enceladon Zosher. Um, I really need to use thinner paint. 
Oh, thanks, Planner, for linking my Patreon. Yes, I forgot to mention it the other day. This shows how discombobulated I am. So I have a Patreon, everybody. And actually, I'm, I'm frenziedly working on content for it now because I finally finished my move because my movers finally came. So now uh, I, I really have to get going because that's halfway through the month. Uh, so I have a lot of content to put out. So expect me to explode in productivity for these last two weeks. I'm going to mix up some pure black so I can put shadows on these boots. Do, 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 just a little bit. But yeah, um, so another thing about palettes and paint consistency and all of that is uh, this, essentially the well palette will keep your paint at the right consistency, but you have to do deeper, deeper puddles. Like I'm using at least eight drops of paint and water combined, if not 10, by the time I'm done. So I, my puddles are fairly deep, you can see. And that deepness of the, of the puddle and the water content essentially makes my paint stay consistently at that at that uh, degree of thin or thickness. Whereas on a wet palette, the nice thing is if you're using thicker paint, the wet palette will leach up water into it and keep it wet, right? But it also means that you can't control the um, consistency of your paint, not within, within certain parameters. So if you thin your paint a lot, the palette paper is gonna just suck all that moisture down into the sponge. And also on the other side, if you're trying to work at kind of a medium consistency, it's going to wick water up into your paint. It's trying to balance it, right? It's just, you're creating an osmosis barrier. So, so depending on what you want, uh, pick a palette and play with it and see what works with it. But keep in mind that the wet palette makes it hard to control your fluid consistency. And also if you're trying to, um, that, that can mean that you have to like pretty much hand mix every brush full, which some people really love and it's part of their style, but it can frustrate you as a beginner. So I always warn people, be aware of this, right? So that you don't wonder what's happening. Because it can be very, very hard to get smooth layering. Uh, if you're looking for smooth layers like on skin, extremely hard to do on a wet palette. And you really have to be really uh, aware of your paint consistency to pull that off on a wet palette. Um, you have to know what you're aiming for. You have to know the consistency, how it looks. And then you pretty much are going to have to mix every brushful. So I'm putting in shadows. I'm going to put in a heavy shadow back here underneath. So yeah, so my dark gray essentially lets me get away with actually adding shadows on my boots. Oh, not seeing video. Refresh, refresh. Um, yeah, thanks for the tools, Taz Lynch. Uh, so my palette that I'm using... It's from Cheap Joe's Art Supply, and it's great because it's got lots of tiny wells in it instead of a couple of, a few big wells. That makes it much easier to make deep paint puddles that keep your paint at the right consistency. So uh, otherwise with those gigantic paint puddles, you'd have to use like 20 drops of paint. And even I think that's a waste of paint. So you want to keep that in mind, but that's why this palette is pretty good um, for what, I, what we do, right? Also, we tend to mix a lot of colors up. Let's see, I'm going to kind of leave a shadow on the front or a shadow on the side here. I'm going to put little shadows under these wrinkles. Werner does uh, great boots just because uh, the, his placement of the creases and wrinkles on the boots, I think, is very realistic. And so I uh, think he's really a good one to practice this sort of stuff on. They're also very clean and clear where the wrinkles are. Up oh, another mold line. Well, we're going to ignore that one. Doo -doo -doo. And this might be the last time we use Tara. I just rediscovered all of my um, pro tips uh, models. So maybe we can work on something else on tomorrow. But this was the model that I had after I unpacked and realized that I had, uh, unfortunately, the movers had grabbed my pro tips models. I might have just run out of room in the car, frankly. So back here, you want to leave a big, this is her her, um, her calf. So you're going to leave quite a big area where you want to highlight that up there. You can shade around it. And you can leave that little crease there. Little crease. Get the bottom of the foot. Assume the sole will be in shadow and you want to line around the foot anyway. Oh, wrong color, Anne. Uh... Yeah, acid bum punk, uh, acid burn punk, uh, dry brushing will leave a texture. And so that's why I always, um, do the, the layering instead. Um, cause I don't want, I need smooth on the, if I'm going to make it look shiny, I usually need to have it a little smoother. Um, I'm mixing paint right now. I, I do tend to use, uh, I do tend to mix a lot. I'd like to teach people how to mix, 
But uh, you could use the triad system just fine on this. I'd probably use, like, if you didn't want to mix paint, I'd use pure black, blue liner. Um, and I might go up to void blue from there and then to ashen blue, maybe. You might have to mix that last highlight. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, some people don't like to mix and some people do. And so I usually, uh, tell people, you know, learn to mix and that way you've got that in your toolbox. Um, and doing like, if you, when you start mixing, just mix two colors. Don't, don't try to do a really complicated mixture. Um, oh, thank you. See not for the raid, by the way. Oh, yay. See not. Thank you. Yay. Hello. Yeah, I mean, just start with, with um, the easiest way to start mixing is just doing a 50-50 mix of two colors. So just like one drop of one, one drop of the other. Um, and then if you have to do any more mixing, like for highlights, just add white. And that way you can always remember what you've done, right? And a lot of people I know also keep like a little book. I wonder if I have one. Not easy to hand. But they'll keep a little watercolor pad and they'll just kind of like, you know, put a swatch down and make a note of what they use to highlight or shade. And that could be a very useful way of uh just learning to mix and seeing what your mixes look like especially if you do one you really like you know all right i'm gonna add more of this now i'm gonna add two more drops of that we're almost to a 50 50 mix well let's just go so i had four drops of black i'm gonna have four drops of void blue and i'm gonna add a little bit more white actually we have four drops of everything if i do this yes there we go so that's easy to remember because that's four 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 or one 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 in ratio terms um, I'm going to put some, I might need to transfer some of it to a different well because my well is getting very deep now. Let's do it. All right. And if you find when you've got like a lot of paint in one of these wells that you're just not getting the shifting color that you're looking for, um, the answer is to just transfer a bit of this into the next well and add white so that you can get a better highlight. But you do not want to go up too fast on this um, because black to white is one of the hardest blends. Obviously, because you're going from the darkest color to the lightest color. So, yay. Hey, Skelsey. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, Hager, I did. Um, the hair is done in a previous video. I actually, uh, was it Monday? Yeah, it was Monday. So if you go look up Pro Tips um, on Monday, I show you how to do blonde hair. Um, actually, I show you how to mix it because I, at that point, none of my paint had arrived because <laughs> um, I just moved. Like, so yesterday the movers came and now I have stuff, but it's all over the place in boxes. So expect me to be a little more organized as we continue to go forward from here. Now, at least I have my own desk instead of stealing my boyfriend's desk. Um, so that, that was an improvement for sure. All right. So now as we're going up lighter, I want to kind of test it. I want to put it, yeah, that's definitely bluish. It's hard for me to see the blue until I look very closely. So essentially you're going to have some highlights going down the front of the boot here. And this might be still a little dark. I just wanted to be cautious with it. Because if you go too white, too light, too fast, then it looks bad. Hmm. Yeah, I do need some more white. Okay, I'm going to add some. One drop. And boop. Now the uh, effect of me taking just a bit of this over into this other palette, uh, well, is that now the white will be very strong because I'm only using a little bit. <laughs> Daily victories. Yeah, essentially uh, the rest of today... I'm going to do a little bit of commission work and then I'm going to just unpack things uh, and start to organize this area because I really need to be functional uh, fast because I want to be able to have things ready to hand when I do these streams for you guys. And obviously I'm going to be doing, uh, I need to get my Patreon stuff going too, so I need to make sure everything works together. All right, so this is more of a medium blue gray. Let's see how light it is. Yeah, actually that's about right. That's not bad at all. All right, so I'm gonna highlight the top of the boot with just a thin line, because that's that upper edge that's gonna catch the light. And then usually the lower ledge and usually lower edge, and then usually there's a highlight down the front, kind of under this crease in top. So I'll actually let me mix up some white right now so I can show you guys. I'll block it in. Block it in. Doot. Yay. And I'm using a big a big brush to mix and I retain my nice brush so it doesn't get its tip tip wrecked. So I have an old flat. That, and flats hold a lot of paint, so that's kind of nice. And a lot of water, so it's kind of a good mixing brush. 
try to always use my crappy brushes for mixing and my good brushes uh, only when I need to actually do things. Yay. But yeah, so so this is... Oh, yeah, I had a little paint left over, so now I'm getting wet blend. Accidental wet blending for the win. So like that is really light on the bottom of that. You can see how light that is on the bottom of the, the boot. And then I will always put a highlight. I always assume a light source coming down from the top. And that means it's going to create vertical highlights on a rounded surface. And a boot is rounded because, you know, you're, you're kind of, it's wrapping around your leg so that it is a rounded surface. So that means that your highlights, your highest highlights are going to glance just directly down the front, which is, um, it makes it a little easier if you think of it that way of how to highlight your boots and your leather. Anything that's reflective is going to do that, like a metal cylinder. If you look online on how to do NMM on cylinders, a boot is essentially a cylinder at least from the front and the back and a little bit from the side. It tends to flatten out a little bit on the side. I'm just going to make a little, little tiny dashes where my highlights are going to be. So this is me blocking in where I'm like, all right, I want to block in my highest highlights and then I can blend them. But this, uh, essentially doing my highest highlight now, let's be kind of look at my placement, make sure that it's, uh, it's reading right, that it looks right. So I'll do this a lot where I kind of block in things and it depends on the model on bigger models. I often will just work slowly and kind of get there slowly. Um, but sometimes on smaller models, I find it's easier to kind of block in my highlights and assess them and then move on. So there we got a little bit. See, Hey, Valandar, good morning. We are here. We are streaming. We are going to be streaming. Hey, guys, and I don't know if I mentioned this. Uh, Justin and I may have mentioned it on uh, on Monday, but we're going to be streaming Monday through Friday for me now. So I am not going to be skipping Friday. So, you know, the rest of you should tune in. We should do a casual Friday stream. Maybe I should just wear like a normal T-shirt, Justin, do you think? Uh, yes, and, but here's the thing. We still owe them an AMA. Oh, dude, I was going to ask you about that. We need an AMA. So we could casual Friday and do an AMA. Do we have enough questions? I'll have to go look. We, yeah, we can go look, but we can tell them now. Hey, guys, um, go put all your questions in the, the Discord. Yeah, join listen. Join the Discord if you haven't already. Yes, definitely join the Discord. Planner, can you link the Discord for us? If you are still in chat. And if not, and somebody else do it. I think I'm going to start doing uh, mini like micro giveaways, too, on each of your shows during oh, nice. like, the morning show. Oh, sweet. Uh, I haven't decided what they're going to be. They're, because we're limited right now with all the you know, stuff going on. Uh, it may just be gift certificates, maybe, or something. Mm. Okay, yeah. I don't know. That'll be. Let's just do digital. That makes sense. And everybody loves gift certificates. It gives you an excuse to get more stuff to paint. Um, AMA is uh, Ask Me Anything Country Gaming. So essentially what it does is it lets you ask me a specific question um, so you guys can guide the content. And uh, it could be anything. It could be about what it's been like working for Reaper for 17 years. It could be about my new place and where I live, my dog, or it could be about painting questions. <laughs> a lot of people asked painting questions last year, uh, last time. So if you go and look up my last AMA, I was uh, talking about things like what's the difference between all the whites that Reaper puts out because we put out a different white in H bones and the regular line so you know questions like that um if it's too complicated i might have to do a show on it instead like do it do it you know do an actual demo because you know how do how do you paint gold nmm it's not a question you can really answer on an ama it's something you have to demo um so things like that uh so yeah so definitely uh do 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 and yes ask me an e thing yes right nomad zeke sure getting those puns in uh, so yeah, so go to the Discord and in the questionable Anne channel, you can click on it and you can add a question and y'all should, uh, cause I'll go in there and, uh, look at it essentially after stream and start making the listing the questions that I can answer. I also need to review last AMA's, uh, questions cause I know there was at least one that I said I would do a show on. I want to make sure that I follow through on that. Um, maybe I'll do it tomorrow and look it up. There's at least a couple of questions on there that took longer explanation than I was able to give. So now the key to shiny leather guys, now we've got it kind of blocked in and you notice what I've done is I've put very bright highlights going right down the middle. I'm going to actually highlight a little bit stronger going down the center part. I need to grab more white. And this is where I will often wet blend at least to start. Um, since I've got this white open and this, I could just mix, uh, you know, a mix, a mix of these, or I could just grab a little of that, grab a little white, 
and do a spot mix on my palette. And I do that a lot. So I'm, I'm kind of treating it like it's wet blending, except that uh, I'm not like losing my paint consistency right away. I do have to work it fast and I do have to remix it every time I want to, because obviously it's going to dry really fast being up here on the palette. Uh, but it, it lets me do a spot blend if I just need a little bit of a mix and I don't want to mix an entire other palette full. I know a lot of people are concerned about wasting paint. So if you're concerned about wasting paint, you can use your dry palette, your well palette to do this. Um, and that way you're just using a little bit of paint to get a very specific color you want. And you're not wasting a bunch. So yeah, so there we go. So we got a bit of a line down the front of that boot. And on camera, it actually looks pretty shiny. Like I only see it in miniature on my camera. Um, but it is starting to read as very shiny. And the key part here, now that we've got most of our blends set, I want to make sure I extend this to the side too. So let me get some of this highlight color and make sure that I carry it around the side of the boot. And I do want to hit, you do want to hit it, um, here where it's definitely flaring out like over her calf here. This is a rounded area. So it's going to get a pretty strong highlight. I'm going to grab some black because I got a little bit light there. Don't want to lose my black. Ha! AM, a, 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 triple A is, yes. Ask and anything. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes. Uh, country, you can, you can do that. Yeah, you can put up favorite miniature or what kind of dog, you know. Um, anything like that. Or, or uh, about the paints. Like, what's the best use for black indigo? Or what's the best use for, um, you know, dark elf uh, skin that isn't skin? You know, things like that. that. Those are great questions. I love those kind of questions where I have a favorite color. Or I really like this color, but I don't know what to do with it. And then tell me the color. And honestly, I'll, I'll be able to tell you like some ways you can use it. Or if you like something that's a skin color, but you don't want to use it for skin, like the dark elf skin. Um, or things like that. Or I want to paint leather, but I don't like any of your leather colors. You know, I need a, I need a dark brown leather. What do I use? You know, things like that. Um, so that, all of that, that's all great, great content. Definitely, I uh, don't feel you have to just make up random stuff, but you know, if you have an actual question, put it up. Or if you want to make up random stuff because you want to see me answer it, go for it. Warning, if you do ask about my dog, you'll have to remind me to like get back on topic and answer other questions because I could talk about my dogs forever. Or now singular dog. We lost our boy uh, this uh, past summer. All right, so I'm definitely highlighting a bit on the calf right up under that lip. I just still want to want to have a dark line underneath the, um, the fold over of the boot because there is a shadow there, but I need to bring out this calf and make sure that uh, it's catching the light. Because when you have shiny leather, any surface that's like can catch the light will catch the light. So it'll really hit, uh, it'll really highlight pretty sharp. So you want to make sure you bring those highlights in. Oh, Mama Sun. Well, we have the winged kitty, Nomad Zeke. I painted her as Mama Sun. So, oh yeah, Kiri is a good girl. She's conked out. She has a she has her dog bed right here next to me. Uh, now in the new office. So it's a little bit actually closer to me than she used to be. So she's pretty happy about that. And we finally got my, uh, when the movers came, they brought her dog bones and her, and her squirrel, her squirrel toy. So she was like super happy to squeak the squirrel again. It was very cute last night when I unpacked that. All right. So one thing to remember when you are painting black is that most of your surface should be black or near black. Otherwise it will not appear black. You can get away with near black if you aren't using pure black on any other part of the model. All right, so that's actually looking pretty good. Let's get a little bit of a lighter highlight here. Thank you for the sub, Wavy DL. Oh, yay! Thanks, Wavy. What's up? Not a lot. We are painting some black leather boots. We are pretending they're super shiny and uh, painting them accordingly. So I am just blocking in some uh, lighter highlights. One thing to remember about that, uh, you're treating this a lot like NMM, actually. You're almost painting black NMM on boots because it's shiny and reflective, just like metal. And it's also opaque. You're like light doesn't pass through leather, not, you know, not from a distance anyway. Like if you had really thin leather, maybe you'd have some filtered light. But in general, um, when you're painting shiny surfaces, be it black leather boots or metal, 
non-metallic metal, um, you're using the same techniques. So, all right, I think we're pretty good. So one thing to remember is then where the light is going to glance off of, you're going to get a bright highlight and then dark shadow underneath it. So here on her toe, as you, as it cuts down, like on the top of the leather, you're going to see a highlight and then you're going to see a shadow as it moves down toward the sole of the foot. There's not much room there, but you do want that. You do want that highlight and shadow um, there as you move off of the top of the boot here. You can see I've got dark shadow under the foot. Hey, Chainer. It's good to see you. So let's see here. I'm going to reinforce that dark shadow underneath the foot, or on the side of the foot, down there, where the boot sole is. There isn't much room for this on a 28 millimeter model, but if you ever paint 54s or 72s or even bigger, um, like the Giants, for example, um, you can maybe utilize this a little bit more. But in general, just remember that under that top platform of the foot, you'll have dark and right where those, right where it cuts down away from the light is where you're going to see that highlight. Now the thing for black leather, oh, just making sure I'm not missing everything. Hello, Bob the Wolf. So you want for sure to have a bright, shiny highlight. So you need to use uh, pretty much pure white, just like, just like with NMM, non-metallic metal. In order for it to really look shiny, you really need to go up to pure white on it. Uh, and you only want to go up to pure white on those tiny micro surfaces that are really catching the light. It's like the tip of the toe. As you're looking at the miniature from the front, these little wrinkles are going to catch the light. And this top edge is going to catch it as well. And if I want to, I can also put one on the edge of the boot fold over because it's catching, um, it's flaring out a bit, but I don't want to do that quite real strong, probably. Shiny. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's fine. This is actually going really fast. So maybe I'll start doing some black leather up here and show you guys rounded surface on her uh, decolletage, so to speak. Um, so that's kind of what you're dealing with. And you, uh, you can always go back in also and grab some black if you feel like you need to darken your shadows. Remember, Putting a dark shadow right next to your bright highlight is one way you can absolutely suggest a shinier surface. So if you're if you're highlighting up to white, but you're not sure you're getting the effect you want, kind of look at where your black parts are and make sure that you have a um, strong black shadow underneath your bright highlight. That should give you the contrast that you need to do a really shiny leather boot. So let's do, I was actually originally thinking about doing her little vest up here, and now I'm thinking it is a good thing to do, so, because I have a little extra time. So might as well, right? Yeah, I'll have to dig around in my Pro Tips models and see what I have for, uh, I'm going to use, that's right, I used uh, my dark gray instead of pure black. I'll have to dig around and see what I, can, what I have for the rest of the week, or for tomorrow, I guess. Wow, this week went so fast. With the moving and yesterday the unpacking just ate us alive even though i was only moving well, i was moving a small house but i really only have i was trying to i thought i reduced the amount of stuff i owned um but apparently i still own a crap ton of stuff <laughs> so i have a lot of organizing to do today um happily david is a very considerate boyfriend and he uh, cleared out a lot of space for me in his uh all of the closets and everything and the drawers and uh he uh he does not have a lot of kitchen implements but i cook so i have a lot of kitchen stuff so we got to figure out how that's going to work because even with uh him cleaning out a lot of area i'm afraid i'm expanding to fill all possible space on the plus side he'll get tasty food as soon as i get combobulated yeah, I mean, I am honestly wavy. I just paint right over it. And then, you know, guys called David are great. <laughs> well, that is my guy. He's David. David Diamondstone, actually. If you've been to ReaperCon, he is an, a painting instructor at ReaperCon. We are both miniature painters. So now our desks are are, uh, are facing each other and we can paint together, which is uh, super fun. We've been wanting to do this for a while because we used to paint when, uh, when we were long distance relationshiping, we would paint uh, over Skype. We would just sit in our respective uh, 
you know, 1600 miles away spots uh, from each other and, uh, and paint that way. But I do like, I can't figure out, does she have a sleeve on this arm? I don't think she does. She definitely has a sleeve on that arm. I don't know. Anyway, let's just figure it out. But yeah, the other exciting thing that we did together as we are getting so domestic these days is we bought a grill, Justin. What? We bought a grill. I've never learned to grill in my life because you know, the guys that I've hung around with since college have all been like grill grill people that growl at you if you try to get too close to the grill and you are not a guy. Um, so I hate to say that, but it's true. Like all the guys are just like, I'll handle the fire. And then they sit there, you know, with it and guard it. Um, I did learn a little bit about grilling from my ex just from observation. Right. But I'm very excited to be able to, uh, to actually learn to grill since I like to cook so much. I've tried so many times to, to teach my fiance how to like, uh, I guess how to, to, to both pan fry with like cast iron yeah as yeah. well as even grill a little bit and she's so unreceptive she does not like to do that sort of stuff oh really I've, I've tried so many times bummer well but you're a good cook as i recall also am i correct i i have hot spots of ability but generally speaking i would say i'm average oh okay. so when it comes to like proteins i feel like that's where i shine but if if you want me to make like a a souffle it's, it's probably never gonna happen <laughs> i see as far as like quality yeah souffle is actually i well i love to bake too so yeah i'm i'm there i'm there totally but i feel like i could i do protein in the oven very well but the the unpredictability of the grill um it has always kind of intimidated me so i'm very excited uh to yeah, try it's, this. it's it's really uh resonated with me as far as interest and that's i i've put a lot of effort into it yeah. in fact i'm confident at this point i can I can pan fry a ribeye to perfect doneness um, and everything. It's, yeah. it's, uh, I think my ribeyes are better than most restaurants, but you know. Yeah, me too. I think my ribeyes are better than most restaurants as well. Yeah, because well, once you get that cast iron down, man, you're, you're good. Uh, cast iron is like so, so good. tasty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, David really likes my steak. He's just like, so are we having steak tonight? <laughs> Uh, but uh but yeah i've got chicken quarters too so i'm like now i'm all excited because i can try chicken quarters on the grill or i can do them in cast iron yeah it's fun sorry if i'm making anybody hungry so you can't cook in the kitchen but grilling is easy for you yeah acid burn punk a lot of guys i know are like that like uh possibly just because um you know it's like it's it's cool right the grill is really cool if you get interested in it then it's easy for you but then trying to switch gears it's just like being really good in the oven and trying to switch gears to the grill can be interesting like when we did we did our first grilling uh when we bought the thing on monday and we just did burgers we wanted to keep it really simple but even then there was a big learning curve uh just because of the unpredictability of the heat and uh and how, how to get it cooked on the inside uh, to the point you want and also get a nice sear on the outside. So I have a couple of grilling books that I'm avidly reading right now. And hopefully that will help me kind of grok it. All right, so I base coated her uh, vest and now I'm shading with uh, pure black. Just pretty much putting a heavy shadow under each breast and then uh, kind of just lining this bottom part, which I might do in a different color. Um, I was going to say that actually in Numbat, my, uh, my thing that I'm pursuing now is sous vide. And it is, it's actually just the easiest, most perfect way to get a cook on a steak, by the way. And yeah. Not just steak, but yeah. I know. Everybody is, is running for the sous vide and my ex had one, you know, and I was just like, well, I don't know. I kind of want to learn it the old fashioned way. <laughs> that's that's You know, but like you can sous vide and then do a reverse sear and it's just... Mm -mm -mm. right because then because the sous vide cooks it all through without overcooking it and then you just put the sear on it and you're fine yeah. yeah but at that point i'm like well i probably would just do the cast iron i wouldn't even fire up the grill right because i just need the sear and the cast iron is going to be fine for the sear so or you could even get a torch some people do that they yeah just take it outside and they torch both sides to get the crispy yeah it's the quickest way i think but... yeah i don't know yeah i'm kind of a traditionalist with some cooking i i don't care if it takes a little long i like to do the whole process so yeah i, I don't know maybe someday if david wants to get a sous vide we might but he'd have to get a lot more interested in cooking than he is right now probably Ah, uh, that's fair and also we have uh we are in an apartment so we have very little space uh all things considered we have a lot of appliances already 
So I don't know. I'm not too interested yet. We'll see. If the sous vide sticks around, like if it isn't just a fad, because you know there's so many things that are just fad that just take off and you get the equipment and then you never use it, um, you know, after you lose interest in it. So if, if the sous vide sticks around and uh, and really everybody's like, yes, yes, this is the way to do everything, uh, then I'll, maybe I'll pick one up. But right now I just really want to learn how to use my grill properly. One thing I do like about sous vide that it's that's harder to capture when you're doing stuff the traditional way though is the is the encapsulation of all of the herbs and like like oh yeah butter and garlic and stuff that you can put in it that just seems to just it's almost like marinating and cooking at the same right right yeah it's probably the heat is probably helping with the osmosis of all that stuff too I'll have to look that up I'll admit the science of sous vide I'll have to like actually because I love food science I love learning oh. why things work exactly that's actually exactly why i got into cooking proteins the way i do because that's you know i in fact um my next thing that i'm doing is i'm gonna dry age some some beef here pretty soon oh I'll yeah let you know how that turns out yeah oh thanks d clearman for answering what the sous vide is valandar yeah it's kind of weird um it's interesting, and it takes a long time. I mean, the sous vide itself takes a long time, right? Because you put the meat in, and it sits there for hours often. Am I correct? Uh, yes, and it's about 100, and like, like I think, I don't know who said it. Oh, D. Clearman did. About 150 for, I mean, you can go for four hours, six hours, eight hours. I mean, it's whatever it takes to get the internal temperature up. Also depends on the quality of your, your sous vide machine. Oh, yeah. So essentially, yeah, you're slow cooking it. And the reason that you're low and slowing it is that it causes it to heat through evenly instead of um, like charring the outside and getting a raw center like uh, beginners can often do on a grill. So, so yeah, it protects you from that. So you have to prepare ahead a little bit because you do have to like put it in the bag and put it in the sous vide and, you know, think about what you're going to eat for dinner the morning before. But, um, but yeah, then it, it's, it low and slows it for a long time and then you can just put a, a nice sear on it as Justin was saying. All right, so we are getting the boobs going. Um, I'm getting, I have a lot of highlight and I need to shrink that down. So since this is shiny black leather, I really have to like work on my highlights here because I really want to. Oh, so you're a, you're a little off camera. All right, am I? Oop, there I am. I was trying to be good this time. All right, so a little bit of a highlight. Now I'm going to come back into it. Remember, right under it is a very strong shadow. So we want that shadow for sure. And also remember that your highlight on this is going to be rounded. So I probably am going to have to adjust it a little bit, but it's a rounded surface. So the highlight should be round in its shape. And I may have to come in and fix that a bit. Uh, I don't read Cooks Illustrated, but I have a couple of their books I'm grinning. Um, I have uh, their Mediterranean book and I have their uh, vegetables book, actually, because I wanted I wanted to put more vegetables, a lot more vegetables in my diet. And I needed some ideas to make them more than just the, the standard thing I do. Um, so uh, I did pick up a couple of their books. I do love cookbooks. I've had to uh, limit myself to not get every cookbook on the planet. Good afternoon, Gridlock. Hello, Tristoma. Oh, multi cooker, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a bummer, Tristoma. Yeah, I had a uh, my my ex and I had a multi cooker. We never really got a lot of or a lot of use out of it. That's why I I'm kind of cautious now on what appliances I add to my kitchen. I'm trying to get this to actually read right here. Probably need my under reflection. Hold on. So there's going to be light bouncing back up at the underside of this area. A little bit of a highlight. Don't want it to get it. That got a little bit out of control over there. Get a little messy. Stop getting all messy. And I'm going to put solid black down there. I'm just going to block this in in black at this point. Trying to make this uh, around a surface read as shiny can be very difficult. Actually, David was complaining about this last night. He was complaining about NMM boobs <laughs> and how difficult they are. So 
he's right. <laughs> now that I'm doing them, he's I'm like, I should do this. I should give it a try. And he's correct. It is really, really difficult to do this. Don't try this at home, kids. Of course, it's also a tiny surface. I think if this was a bust, I could do it a little bit easier. But I could be wrong on that. All right, so I'm putting it in under reflection. That's helping. I also need to get a little bit on that bottom edge of the uh, vest. A little highlight down here. It's still shiny. And I want this area to kind of stand out. Yeah, a bust sized bust, right, Jason? <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, if you were painting the whole model, would it base coat everything first or do the skin first? Um, MC, MCC War, I uh, actually normally do the skin first and then I paint out. So I would have done skin, then hair. I do paint in segments just like I'm doing here. So I do finish one segment entirely and then move on to the next. Um, mostly because back before uh, painting was my full-time job, I had just little bites of time to paint. And I wanted very much to, uh, to feel like I accomplished something. Uh, at the end of a bite-sized chunk of time. So essentially that's how I got into the habit of finishing one area completely before I moved on to the next because then it would give me the sense that I had actually accomplished something and I wouldn't get like bogged down and feel like overwhelmed by the model because sometimes I could do that um, if, if I base coated everything because I used to. That's actually when I was uh, more of an intermediate painter. Um, I did often base coat the whole model and then I would work on it. But... I did find that I would get just a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, I would get, I would feel like I had so much left to do on the model. Uh, and so, because nothing was really getting finished, it was all progressing slowly. I wasn't seeing notable progress. So I find that, uh, no, you don't have to be subscribed, Acid Burn Punk. You're good. Uh... All right, there's a steak question here from Riot, and I missed the first part of that. Sauce to help, help keep it hydrated. Oh, and barbecue. I'm not sure which that what the hydration refers to. Are we talking about grilling? Are we talking about pan frying? Are we talking about sous vide? Sous vide is just cooking its own juices, pretty much. Yum. Yum, says Justin. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I haven't eaten anything because I spent most of the morning cleaning up my cat's mess. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't get much. I got half of my breakfast. Uh, I'm still trying to, especially with dodging around everything, I'm still trying to figure out, like, timing. Because for me, it's much earlier than it is for the Central Time people. So, all right, we are getting there, guys. We are getting there. I'm going to put the edging on this. I lost a little bit of it on the other side, so I'm going to put a black line in between there. Oh, what makes a good steak? Well, for me, it's uh, medium rare. That's what makes a good steak. Medium rare, salt and pepper, cast iron. Although grill is good too. I can't wait. I, I'm interested to try a steak on the grill, but as I am very fussy about my steak and as I do it very well in the cast iron, I'm not willing to try it until I have mastered simpler things like burgers. Once I have the sense of how to cook a burger through and still get a good sear on the outside on the grill, then I will feel a little more confident about a steak on the grill. So right now I do a killer ribeye and cast iron, mostly like Justin's talking about. That's where it's at. And that's that's how I cook, I would say, 90% of the time. But occasionally I'll grill. But I'm, I'm kind of with you there on my preference. On the, I mean, I have the same preference is what I mean. Yeah. So, okay, so this is actually coming along now. I'm starting to see reflections. Um, this is starting to look reflective to me up here on her vest. I need to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, I now that we have the grill, I'm just, I'm excited to use it. I want to do vegetables. I want to try salmon, just like you say, um, uh, as a burn. Yeah, about 9.30. Way... Hmm? Go ahead. That 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 is one protein that I absolutely suck at on the on the stovetop. I'll be honest. Really? Like I think if there's one thing that I will always and try to sous vide, it would be salmon. Really? Yeah, I do. I bake yeah. it. I bake it and get good results that way. Yeah, I can't manage to even when I, I even when I bake it. I I don't know if it's my oven. Maybe it's too hot or I, whatever the problem is. I I can almost never make salmon. 
to the point to where I actually like. I end up just eating it raw most times. I know it's <laughs> a little crazy. 400 degrees, and if it's a thin salmon fillet, 12 to 13 minutes. 400 degrees, and if it's a thick salmon fillet, uh, 18, I think. Um, 17, 18, 15 to 18. Uh, and that should give you a very moist, juicy, tender salmon on the inside and uh, cooked on the outside. And of course, if you want to brush some teriyaki glaze on it, like I did the other night, do that halfway through. Because sugar. Yummy. Yeah, it's... Uh... Now I'm going to put a tiny little white. Remember, we need that white spotlight right above our dark shadow to make it really look shiny. So I'm going to do that tiny little white catch light right on the tip of the boob. Talking about boobs today on Reaper Stream. Oh, no. Um, this, I think it'd be easier, Wavy. I mean, okay. So, okay. The one thing is, on a smaller model like this, you can fudge it. Like, you don't have to be perfect to make it look right on a smaller model. Um, you do have to be good and make sure your highlights and shadows are all nailed on a larger model. But a larger model also gives you more room to work. Trying to fit all these highlights and shadows into a tiny area like this can be very challenging. So that's why I'm, I'm futzing around trying to bring it all up appropriately in various places i think i need to get near white down on the underside a little bit lighter just a little bit a little bit more light because it is I'm in, i am trying to do really shiny so you never bring your reflection up as high as your as your over area um as your top area but you do want to bring it up close sometimes if you're doing very reflective surface like this Okay, that's actually looking pretty okay. All right, let me hit spot highlights in the center. Just kind of bring it up because remember the light's coming straight down, so I want to catch some of this. And I want to catch uh, this area with a real strong highlight right above where the highlight is down below. There, that's looking a little better. Now I'm gonna actually accentuate this highlight even more because I've got my placement right. Sometimes you wanna put a really small bright highlight on first and then hit it stronger. Once you know that it's looking right and you've got your placement good, you just need to accentuate it a little. Just gotta be careful not to overdo it. All right, now that's starting to really look reflective at this point. And I only have a little bit of a suggestion of blue. I didn't go too blue. You can see this is a blue-gray. And that's key. That's key. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Um, Clover, if I'm going for a shiny brown leather, yes. But I probably am going to go more golden with my highlights, not use white as strongly. Um, because a lot of leather, when you put it under light, goes it goes quite golden or orange. Um, so... Uh, I would, I would do that differently. I would use a different set of colors for brown leather. And we can certainly put brown leather on for uh, a future show. No problem. I tend, to use, I tend to use a lot more colors for brown leather. Like I'll go with more dark brown, a reddish brown, a golden brown. I'll kind of mix them all up. Uh, use them all. So yeah, so I think this is actually reading just about right. If I was trying to do shiny black leather, there she is. Yeah, the hair's really blocked in. I mean, whenever I do stuff for the show where I'm just trying to show technique and I'm not really um, not really finishing it out the way I would on a, on a Reaper model um, that I was doing for gallery, uh, then it's, it's always kind of a little bit less than I could have done. Um, this, though, I actually did a lot of work on these guys, on this, so I think I'm, I'm liking. I, obviously, I didn't tackle the shoulders or the arms at all, but the central part is, uh, is pretty on, I think. You can highlight brown leather with flesh tones. Essentially, what you want to do if you're going to do brown leather uh, is you need to find a picture of leather that you want to do um, and base it on that because that's going to, it's going to vary. Um, the problem with skin tones and leather, depending on when, it, it really depends on the brown you start with for your leather. But because skin tones tend to have a lot of white in them, they can also give you kind of a bleached out, more muted leather, which sometimes you really want. Uh, and it depends really on what you're doing. But if you're going for that really rich reddish, reddish golden tan leather that a lot of cowboy and saddles and uh, 
um, old west leather tends to be or an oiled leather then probably don't want to use skin tones or if you do use skin tones also use a drop of yellow in there uh yeah yeah if i guess if you're right and that's where it comes in right jay that's where it comes in actually looking up a photo reference if you're looking at vegetarian tanned leather then you want to have a photo you want to choose appropriate colors leather can be so different yeah so, and you got to think also about, you know, obviously what model you're painting and what they'd be likely to have, or just, you know, just choose a color because you like it. I don't care. Um, but yeah, there's so many ways to paint leather. Like if we had brown leather, I mean, like if we, uh, if we ever just covered brown leather, it would take like five shows and I still wouldn't be able to cover all of the different, uh, options for painting it. But yeah, because of the rich and warm tones. And that's what I'm used to, right, Jay Zion? Because in Texas, I was always seeing like tooled saddles and belts and boots and things like that, and hats. Uh, and they were always very warm, warm tones in general. So, so that's all. When, when, that, when I think of leather, that's what comes to mind. But there's so many other ways to do leather. I mean, of course, you're not even co talking about like dyed leather when you get to colored, uh, with, they can suggest more. Yeah, because of the oil. But it also gets a lot grungier in the cracks, right? Darker in the cracks because of the oil picking up the grime and stuff, um, depending on how well you wash it. So, so yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I think I think we've managed to do some shiny black leather on this rogue. She is extremely shiny. Um, she almost looks like like rubber. <laughs> it almost, and that's the thing, right? Is that that you got that um, the pleather, the faux leather, um, and uh, vinyl and stuff. Uh, it's all, it's, you paint it the same way, especially on this kind of scale. Now, when you get on a bigger model, you can suggest a lot more texture on your uh, leather. That's the big difference, right? And then you can make it look very different from pleather or vinyl or rubber, because obviously those things don't really have a lot of texture on them, but leather is going to have a lot of texture from the pattern of the animal skin. So as far as the folds, creases, um, and all that sort of thing. So that's the difference between painting it on the little, little scale and the big scale. And I've talked a bit about leather on my Patreon. So, um, it's, uh, you can vary how, how crazy you want to go with your texture on that for sure. And I need to do a little bit more on it too, uh, to teach you guys more about how to do leather textures on bigger things. So, all right. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, look up leather, like do a Google search on like leather boots or leather, whatever, and see if you can find like a good reference, uh, to base your, your highlight or your colors on. Uh, it's always a, whenever you're trying to paint something that looks realistic, it's always advisable to look at a photo reference. Cause you're going to think, you know what it looks like until you start to paint it. And then if it doesn't look quite right, you're going to be like, Hmm. And you're gonna look up a picture and go, Oh, I for forgot this, you know, stuff like that. So for animals or for things like like any realistic or naturalistic surface, like if you're trying to paint oil cloth or you're trying to paint, you know, wool or stuff like that, it does pay to look at uh, photos online. That's the great thing about the internet. We can all get references without going to the library and checking out a book um, or building a library, although building a library is fun, of photo references. All right. Uh... <laughs> Wife's going to come home to her boots sitting on the table. Yeah, I know. I have a pair of black boots too. <laughs> Yeah, she's got the Matrix vibe going on, right? And that's the thing. When you do the really patent leather look, then it really does start to look more science fiction than fantasy, right? Because you didn't often see a really, really fine polished leather like this uh, in the fantasy world, I'm betting. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, and if you want, yeah, if you want to make it worn acid burn, you can use dry brush or you can use texturing. So, like, you could stipple. Like if I wanted to make the, her boots muddy, I wouldn't dry brush them because the problem with dry brushing is there's no texture here for it to pick up. You have to use it to create texture, but that can mean it's easy to overwhelm all the work that you did. So instead I would probably mix up like some shield brown or driftwood brown and I would, I would do a little stippling. So like little dots, um, I would take most of the paint off my brush, kind of like dry brushing, but leave a little extra paint done and I would do stipples because that on a very tiny area like this, that's smooth. I find dry brushing is problematic because I'm probably going to hit things that I don't want to hit, whereas stippling lets me be precise. So, and if you like texture, if you like dry brushing and you like the texture it creates, learning to do stippling is worth it because it's, you can get a nice controlled texture, um, and still get the texture that you like. So I use stippling an awful lot. I should probably do a show on stippling. All right, Miss Ann, I have a uh, raid lined up for us. We have a raid? Awesome. Who are we raiding? We are going to be raiding Miss Dices. Just oh, Dices. Just Dices. Not anything else, just Dices. 
All right, cool. Excellent. That sounds fun. All right, Miss Ann. All right, are we and, ready? Uh, All right, guys. Yes. Thanks I'm for tuning in. we right here and we can yep. do our sign. All righty. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you tomorrow morning. I'll see what we can uh, what we can get in trouble on tomorrow. Have a great one. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye. See you guys. Thanks for coming out. And don't forget to start your mornings or afternoons or late nights, whatever you need to, with uh, Miss Ann here Monday through Friday. That's how I'm going to start my days, so. All right, see you guys later.